Let's see all the breakfast in PLOS TV Africa, and we're about to look at the pages this morning. We like to call it Off the Press. Open a Boy Kataria is on standby. He joins us via phone. Open a Boy, it's good to have you join us. Good morning, and, uh, you know, I hope you're ready for the elections. Good morning, Mercy. Good morning, Kofia. Good morning, Nigeria. All right. Let's start off with the leadership newspaper this morning. Governors won a recession as cash crunch bites harder. That's the bold caption you find uh, following the Naira exchange saga that we have been experiencing. Ask President Mohamed Buhari, CBN, to listen to the voice of reason. What is the voice of reason? Private sector cries out over shortage and low sales. Peer POS uh, transaction slumps by 13%. If you feel pains, Tunubu tells Nigerians, uh, I feel your pains, I beg your pardon, Tunubu tells Nigerians. PDP insists APC holding new notes in states. Wow. These are the headers you find underneath the bold caption this morning. But we're still looking at the leadership. 2023 polls be impartial. Can Catholic bishop tells Einek? Of course, the umpire is expected to be neutral in all of this. Despite court verdict, customs auction petrol laden trucks as crap. And bandits kill DPO, four policemen in uh, Niger State. Don't incite you to violence. Uh, there's a caution to politicians right there. And just before we move away from the leadership, you find another that says, we won't abandon you. Okowa assures families of slain policemen. Fake opinion polls will cause violence and PP warns. That's the much we can take this morning on the leadership newspaper. Daily Trust is up next uh, with these headlines. A cash crunch, rural dwellers resort to trade by barter. It's quite interesting. Cash crunch, rural dwellers resort to trade by barter. Uh, and the writers to that... Can't access new nodes, old nodes, after taking cash to bank. Bonu Yobe villages turn to Niger's currency. It's quite, quite bizarre situation in that part of the country. At the top of that front page of the Daily Trust, 13 days to go. We'll work with women across states for Tinubu's victory, Badaru. Obedience launch structured media in an app for election monitoring. Uh, Taraba PDP governorship candidate, I'll use military experience to address security challenges. We're counting down to the elections. Quite close by, I'm sure the excitement is palpable. Um, Nigeria records 13% growth as airlines airlift 16 million passengers. How influencers, politicians mislead Nigerians ahead of elections. A very big issue. Uh, Atiku asks DSS to interrogate Fani Kayode over coup allegation. <laughs> CBN's Naira policy is money confiscation, NGF. Uh, CBN's Naira policy is money confiscation, NGF. Interesting uh, uh, name they've come up with, description they've come up with. Turkish Embassy, Murik, seek help for earthquake victims. Uh, bandits kill DPO, four policemen in Niger State, and man dies in scuffle with school bus driver who defiled his seven-year-old there's a picture uh, of some of the, you know, uh, displaced persons in Turkey uh, following that earthquake in Turkey and Syria. So far, the dev toll is said to be crossing the 30,000 uh, person mark. A really sad one. Mm. We need to turn our attention to the business day now. Uh, that's what we're looking at, mostly business stories that will impact the economy. 31 governors pile up 4.8 trillion naira debt for successors. Like I always say, such a difficult time to vie for political office as governor, president, and what have you. It's going to be a lot. Uh, it's a big story on the business day. And so looking at the business day, how Buhari failed to heed counsel on chaotic naira redesign policy sounds like an editorial. And... Nigerian businesses rigs worst credit crunch in seven years. Supermarkets, banks, and old Naira collection. Four ways to prevent violence in 2023 elections 
according to crisis group. But can violence be eliminated, be eliminated uh, in our system, or how can we prevent it? These are some of the questions uh, begging for answers. That's the much we can take this morning on the business day. All right, let's uh, quickly um, bring in Okunabo and Kotaria at this point. And of course, um, uh, we'll start with the stories on the front page of Daily Trust ahead of the 2023 elections. We have 13 days to go. Miss and Kotaria, uh, various political parties are, you know, doing the final dance, the last hurrah, um, trying to, it's like enticing a lady, beautiful lady, you know, with um, nice words. Uh, on the front page, uh, Badaru is speaking, saying they will work with women across states for Tinubu's victory. You have obedience. Launching a, a mobile app for election monitoring. What are your thoughts on what's been going on so far with these stories and the campaigns in recent days ahead of the election? Hello? Yeah, Mr. Tara, can you hear me, please? All right, uh, I'm saying that, uh, that we start with the Daily Trust, 18 days to go, that's what the paper is, or 13 days to go is what the paper is saying. Um, it seems that the political parties are doing their final bid to entice Nigerians to, to vote for them. What are your thoughts on, on what's been going on so far? Um, Obedience, the paper says, has launched a, a media app for election monitoring. A member of the APC, Badaru, is saying that they'll work with women across the states in the country for Tinubu's victory. And a lot has been said in recent days. Your question is uh, my opinion on what yes. the are doing exactly. to, to who voters in Nigeria. Right? Yeah, yeah, with 13 days to go. Well, they, they are everybody, every politician will definitely. Um, engage himself by employ practices that will get voters on the side, provided it is within the remit of the law. There is nothing wrong with that. I mean, lobbying is allowed. Uh, if, for example, now you promise you make all the empty promises or even promises you believe are going to be fulfilled, and those uh, promises are persuasive enough, you know, it's allowed because all you need to do is. Uh, say something that will make any Nigerian, any voter to vote for you. But the important thing is that it should be within the remit of the law and not uh, employing, like what we had in other states, all kinds of brigandage, monstrosity, and so on, attack on lives, property, and what what is going on right now in other states. Say those uh, acts that are illegal and uh, very unconstitutional and are definitely in contravention of the electoral act. Every other means you employ, lobbying is called lobbying, every other means you employ is allowed. Now the question is, who will actually want the talk? Is elected, that will be the question. And that is where the discerning factor of the electorate comes in. An electorate should be able to look at the antecedents of the candidate, uh, because funny enough, the three major political candidates, four major presidential candidates uh, were in office at one point in time or the other. We are talking of Peter Lee, we are talking of Papa Anso, uh, Tinibu, we are talking of Atiku Abubaka. So it's now incumbent on the electorate to uh, take under advisement their antecedents while in office. And living out of office, their character, and so on, uh, the wisdom post office era. And that will definitely inform them. And most importantly, the ability, the communication skill, you know, the ability to communicate effectively to the electorate, which is due to convincing them to vote for you. If there is nothing wrong with that. You can set up radio stations, you can set up uh, newspaper, publishing houses, and so on. Whichever means, provided it is within the remit of the law, it is allowed, it's permissible. But, but Mr. Utera, quickly before we look at the next uh, story with Mercy, uh, it seems uh, uh, Atiku Abubakar has really not been as visible as um, the other candidates. Who? Atiku Abubakar, it seems he's not been as visible as the other candidates. Who is not visible? Sorry, who is not visible? Atiku Abubakar, I said it seems. Atiku Abubakar 
What you are talking of in terms of the media, am I right? You're yes, in terms of the media, media, in terms of traversing you know, the length and breadth of Nigeria, I mean, we've seen where Tidibo has been going at his age, you know, you know the about jumping the media, everywhere. I tell, I, tell a lot, I tell a lot of people that no matter how good and brilliant you are, if the media to, does not carry your story, it's a waste. Because and I think the Atiku Abubakar camp, sadly, is my presidential candidate, uh, is not really interested in publicity, so to speak. Aggressive publicity. The world has gone beyond the normal publicity we used to have. But even at that, if you compare the publicity uh, of Atiku and that of the other presidential candidates, I can tell you it's lagging behind. And that is why it seems as if he's not visible. He's working, no doubt about that. But I always say that any politician who plays down on publicity is actually not serious. And this, whether he likes it or not, publicity goes a long way to mold the opinion of people. And that is the problem with the article scam. And that is why it seems as if it's not that visible. It's a question of publicity. Well, um, let's look at the business. The 31 governors pile up 4.8 trillion naira debt for successors. And uh, my question to you is, what do you make of the precarious uh, state of finances of this, you know, state government or state governors? Most governors, uh, they finish their treasury drive. They get loans ostensibly to executive projects. Most of these loans are not used for the very purpose for which they were gotten. They get these loans and further online their pockets. Some of them will start projects that they will never, never com complete. Some of them will start projects that they will complete, but the question is, are those projects relevant as, as at that point in time? Because, you know, for fear of prosecution when you leave office, what a lot of them do is they go even when it's not necessary to have the flyovers and bridges in starting areas, they go, they get this loan in the name of a flyover. And in most uh, in most cases you find out that even when the cost of that flyover is say ten billion, they tell you twenty billion naira. So that they will also get ten billion naira from it. And these are loans that won't be paid back. And these debts are going to be inherited by their successors. And that is why I think the paper is now trying to draw the attention of Nigerians to this fact. But it is a fact. Most governors, most successors, the, most, the first statement they make once they are in office is that they inherited a debt of social billion. A debt of social billion. And if you just suppose that with the development on ground, you find out that uh, you begin to wonder the so-called money is the loans that we are collected. Where are they are being injected into? Because there is nothing to justify the loans that the so-called student sources have collected. And that is why it's now making a screaming headline that most of sectors are going to inherit loans running into that amount that uh, you have on the paper. But I'd like to ask you, because the list of these uh, states, you have the likes of River State, Aquibum State Inclusive, and, of course, Lagos State right there. And we know that in terms of revenue capacity and generation and allocation from the uh, Federation account, uh, it comes very huge. So why exactly should the state be, you know, caught up in this saga of debt? Well, in, in, in River State, I, I don't want to talk about Aquibum. But in River, why I say I don't want to acquire about this because I don't have the fact there about concerning acquire. But if you talk of River State, for example, this is expected. Although the governor has uh, boasted on several locations that is not going to leave any debt, no debt will be inherited by his successor. But when you look at what is going on, you find out that that is completely untrue because loans are even collected in River State by the governor of River State just to dash another state. How can you 
talk of giving a state 500 million, another state 300 million, the other state 700 million, this other state 400. Where would the money come from? Definitely, because we don't even have that kind of money to throw away. We cannot create a resource, resources and claim we have money. We don't have that kind of money. So where would the money come from? But for some political reasons, believing he was going to cleanse the presidential speaker, or he was doing that in order to ingratiate himself with the electric or the power that he, that he thought we were going to give him the ticket. So he was not fit to our resources, and he was collecting loans. Otherwise, under the most circumstances, the allocation from the federal government and our, our idea to sustain us and live in North in our offers for his successor to start with. But that is definitely not going to be the case because so much has been wasted by the government of Silver State. Not in terms of projects and so on, in terms of giving our doling out money to states. And you cannot explain that what the federal government cannot even do is what the government of River State is doing with our resources. What even the federal government cannot do? How many states have come to give River State one night? No one, not one state. The other day I went to Lagos, book lot or whatever, 300 million dollars. Where do we have that kind of money from? That means it's going to get loan. And the start of the means that you are getting this loan, workers are not paid. Pensioners are old. There is no promotion in the civil service. Nothing. You don't have employment. There's any better unemployment. Yes, you are doling our money, giving our money out to other states. What even the federal government cannot do? The federal government that has the treasury is in control of our treasury cannot even try that. It's what the United States government is doing. So that did his successor was definitely good and that is why he is foisting that boy on river people in order to cover his tracks. It's as simple as that. And I believe that is the case in other states. But I don't think other state governors are as reckless as this. Well, no, but Mr. Secretary, will it be will it be fair? But, but yeah. they are in debt. Sorry, will it be fair to, for but you the point to is that they are in debt. Oh, okay, sorry, Messi, go on. Yes, I mean, sorry. just before, I'm going to hand this over to Kofi now. But my point here is, if you have this state over time that have been rated as states that have the capacity or over time have generated, uh, you know, internal revenue to cater for the expenses, then how come they are also part of, you know, this debt profile that they are living for their successors is the question. They no, have the no, capacity to sustain that. You have the enough money. I just explained it. You have enough money that could take care of all your needs in the state, so to speak. But when you filter away these resources, definitely you're going to be in need. You're going to be in lack of it. It's as simple as that. If, for example, now I have money to pay my child's school fees, which is 10 million naira, for example. Our school fees is 10 million naira. His school fees is 10 million naira. And I have 10 million naira. Rather than pay the school fees, I now start giving out to, uh, the 2 million, 1 million, 3 million. Then when it's time to pay school fees, I thought she will sit at home, I'll go and borrow money. That is what they are saying. So if you manage your resources prudently, you're not going to fall down any need for that. But it is because the resources are not prudently, judiciously managed. So they pick away these resources, and because they have access to these loans, they can get the loan. But I have the IGR, which is about 8 billion in real estate every month, and the allocation is more than enough. More than enough. You don't need loans to do these things. All right. Uh, Ms. Sinkotera, thank you very much mm -hmm. for your time. It's uh, quite interesting. I heard you referring to uh, uh, a, pre a governorship candidate of the PDP in River State as a boy. I don't know why why he did that. I don't, maybe it's... Can we Sorry? Say, I heard you referring to... Sorry? Did I hear... Did, uh, did we hear you refer to the governorship candidate of the PDP in River State as a boy? Kofi, are you not a boy? <laughs> if I say you're a man, what is wrong? All right. Okay. Well, well... I mean, I mean, are you not a boy? If, if somebody that is older than me calls me a boy, what is wrong with that? Let's not blow this is out of proportion. If some are younger, so if I call him a boy, what is wrong with that? All right. All right. Uh, Miss Secretary. Is that what? Is Miss not a girl? All right. Um, um, in, anyway, th thank you so much for your time. Um, we we have a lot we could have touched on, especially with regards to the new Naira. Um, we hear some people are uh, using butter means to. I, to I thought we were going to. I thought we were going to go into the new Naira notes. 
Yeah, yeah. Okay, j just a word on that before you go. Just very quick, we have only a minute. So just a word on that. You know, we hear they're resorting to butter in some parts of the country. Uh, the Niger Republic currency is what is being used. And the NGF are saying that the CBN is engaging in Naira confiscation. So in a sentence or two, your thoughts on that, please. Because no one is like, I have to hear you. But if you can hear me, let me just give an opinion on that in Naira notes. Can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. Yes, but I, I, I really didn't hear what you said. But it, first, let me say it's, um, I just said for intent be good reasons, but implementation is a problem. I I am calling for the immediate sack of the CBN governor because uh, the man is grossly incompetent. What you have in, concerning the Naira notes is arbitrary. You have a situation where you want you have uh, you want to collect one thousand naira or ten thousand naira, you charge two three thousand naira. That's not the present now, and it's so for it's like a dollar, and this has got a total hardship on Nigerians. You know, not that's why the bad governors we had in the last seven years or thereabout. This has worsened the situation. A lot of us have not been able to hold. There are many Nigerians who have not been able to hold. Just 1,000 Naira, the new Naira notes of all. In fact, the question has what has happened to the 50 Naira and 100 Naira notes? Why, why are those notes not in circulation? Thank you, you very much. Open a boy, we, we, we have to go. Uh, I, po I apologize right. for interrupting, but we have to go. That's the size of of the press this morning. We'll take a break. When we come back, we dive into our first major conversation talking about uh, political corruption, the economy of political corruption uh, in Nigeria. We'll be right back.